Hello, welcome to Felting Fridays. Thank you for joining us, I'm Jamie. Today we're gonna chat a little bit about tools. When we first start felting, it can be a little overwhelming. Uh, you go online and there's all kinds of different things. The great thing about felting though, is for needle felting, you really only need a needle, a surface, and wool. And then the other things are extras you can add on as needed. So I'm gonna go over a few tools. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. And I can't see them right now, so I'll go back to them after. And if you need to come back to this, we'll be uploading it to our YouTube later. So you can check it out there. So first off, we're gonna talk about a surface. So when you're needle felting, the needles are quite brittle. If you just work on the table, you have a good chance of snapping the end. Or if you're like me and you work in your lap, it's gonna hurt when you get your leg. So we always wanna have something to work on. And there's lots of choices. So we carry foam pads, and these come in all different sizes. And they're inexpensive, they work really well. Their downfalls are, over time, they are gonna um, tear away. So you're gonna get little bits of foam eventually. And then they're not compostable, so they'll end up in the landfill. And then the other option that we carry are the wool pads. These are 100% wool. We make them right here in our studio from local wool. And they're two pads that are sewn together and filled with wool. And you'll work right on there. It will eventually um, compact a bit, but um, you can even, if you need to, you can patch it up. So they'll last you a really long time they're wonderful to work on and at the end of their life they're compostable and then other options out there that we don't carry there are ones that look like a brush and kind of an upside down brush and you work on the bristles I'm not a big fan of them you'd have to try them out and see what you think and then there's burlap ones as well that you fill with rice those are a great compostable option as well they don't last quite as long as the wool but it's an inexpensive option and then after that, we need something to work with. So we like to work with 100% wool. You do want to work with a wool that isn't superwash. So superwash is when they've treated the wool with a chemical and it takes all of the uh, guard hairs and scales off. So then it doesn't felt, so you can machine wash it. So we don't want superwash, we want something else. So there's lots of breeds. They're all gonna felt a little differently. We use Dorset here for our needle felting, and it needle felts really, really well. It's a little tougher to wet felt with, but you can. It's just gonna be a lot more work. So different wools all work differently, and you have to play around and see what you like. But they come in different um, ways. So we like to work with roving. So the roving comes in strips, which is nice because it's, easy when you're going to go to roll it up and stuff like that. Uh, then there's also batting and batting works great too. It's going to come in a big sheet and so with that you're going to just rip it off and then work in chunks. The great thing about uh, both roving and batting is the fibers are still a little bit mixed up so they're easy to felt with. You can also get things called top you won't find Canadian top, but other types of wools um, come in a form called top. And top is basically where they've gone from the batting form into a roving, and then they've done this process again. So all of the fibers are aligned really straight. It's wonderful for spinning. Uh, for your core of your project, you're better off with something like the roving or the batting, but you can use the top for the outside. Um, it can look nice and smooth and add different texture. So those are kind of the three forms that you're going to find wool in. And then you can also play around um, with different types of wool. So uh, the goat produces mohair, which are little curly locks, and they're shiny. And they're great for doll's hair, uh, beards and things. We also have some we have curls. Uh, these come from the Cotswold sheep. And so this hasn't been processed like the roving and the batting. And so we use it for adding little beards. 
so it's great for adding details. And then you can get other things like alpaca, which is nice and hairy, so it'll give you a hairy look. Um, people even use cat and dog hair, so you can get creative and do all kinds of fun things. So that's your wool. Um, after that, let's take a peek at needles. This is always the confusing part for most when you're first starting out, because there's a lot out there. So in our shop, we carry uh, fine needles, medium needles, coarse, and then reverse. So I'm gonna tip down and show you what the needles look like. So these are the medium needles and with the coarse, the fine, and the medium, they're all gonna look like this. They have little barbs. And those little barbs are what catches the wool. So when you poke in, it's gonna catch the wool and mat it up. So the more you poke, the more matted it gets. And that's how we felt things. Uh, the difference in the needles, the fine needles are good for um, adding detail. So when you're ready to add things like the mouth, any kind of facial features, great for that. Also great for finishing the last coat because it's not going to leave as many indents. The mediums work really well for most of your project. Um, getting it going and then doing most of the felting. With our wool, we find the medium works really great. If you're using needles that don't come, find medium coarse. The mediums are usually about a 36 to 38 and the fines are about a 40 to 42 depending how fine and then coarser is going to be an even smaller number. And then we've got reverse needles. So the reverse are kind of fun. Uh, those little barbs actually go in the opposite direction. So instead of coming in and pushing the wool in to mat it, it actually goes in smooth, grabs the wool and pulls it out. So here I've got a white center ball that I have put black over top. So if I use a reverse needle and poke in, I'm going to pull out some of those white fibers. And what that does is two things. It gives us a nice fuzzy feature, but then because I've used two different colors, you're going to get that two tone effect which is great when you're creating some of the animals like dogs that have different um, tones in their coats. So that's what you can use a reverse needle for. And then from there, um, you don't have to have a holder. You can actually work with the needles just like that. And that's what we did for years. And Mike still does that. And, but you can get these little holders. We have wooden ones. They do come in plastic as well but in our shop we try to refrain from plastic. So you'll find the wooden ones and it just fits right in there. And then you slide that on and you're ready to go. And so you can change that out if you break your needle or need a new one. I have a little trick. I use a paint pen and I put letters on each of mine so I know what they are. So this is my reverse, my medium has an M and so on. And then they do also have multi-passes. So this is a multi-pass. These are great for working big surfaces. So if you're working a really big painting or something, or even a big ball, it'll make it go faster. This one here can hold up to eight needles. I tend to use three, that's what I like to work with, but you can add as many as you like, and it just unscrews. So you just unscrew it, pop your needles in, and then screw it back up. You can find these in other materials as well. Uh, there's a plastic one with a sheath. I'm not personally a big fan of that one. Uh, some people love it though, uh, but these are great. And the wood is wonderful. So other than that, I always have scissors. I have way too many pairs of scissors. I hoard them everywhere. So little embroidery scissors work really well to have with you in case you need to snip something, maybe your hair's here too long, you can go in and give it a haircut. So either something like that 
or some people like the little snips. So those are very handy. Uh, awls are great. So two weeks ago, we did a felting Friday on how to add eyes. So you can go back and watch that if you'd like. Uh, basically, when you're doing your eyes, you're gonna create a bit of an indent with your needle, and then you're gonna use an awl, and you're gonna poke, and that's gonna poke a hole in so that you can actually slip the eyes in. So the awls are great if you're gonna be adding eyes. Um, I have seen them used for other um, indents and things as well. But I use them for eyes. In our shop, we like to use glass eyes. Um, so these guys here are German glass. Uh, they're handcrafted. So each one might be slightly different. We use the ones on the loops. So the loops you can sew in. You can also get ones with posts, and with the posts you would just um, use some glue and put it in that way. So there's different options. There are plastic ones out there, but we stick with the glass here. So those are your eyes. Um, then pipe cleaners. So pipe cleaners are great for doing all kinds of things. You can use them for making armature you can use them for doing things like tails. So this little guy here, I used it in the tail, and then that way I can bend his tail for that little guy. I also used one in my gnome so that I can bend his hat. So those are fun. The cotton is really great um, as opposed to the ones you find at the dollar store. Two reasons, it's all natural. Um, also the cotton, it catches the wool really nicely. So we're a big fan of the cotton pipe cleaners. You can also do armature with wire and you can find wire for that at the hardware store. And then if you're into 2D felting, there are a couple options. There's a few options. Um, we have two in our shop, so I'll talk about those first. So wool craft sheets are great. They come in, we have like 80 colors. They're 100% wool. They are made in Europe from South American wool. So they are certified. Uh, the dyes are not harmful, so you can make kids toys from them. We've used these for making things like birthday crowns. You can needle felt a picture right on, and then you can cut it up. And because it's felted, it's not gonna fray. So those are fun. You can also do 2D landscapes on those. And then we have our pre-felt. So, the pre-felt is needle felted. It's quite thick and it's made from US wool and it's made right in the States. And it's not as dense as the craft sheets. It's quite softer and it's lovely for doing um, things like pictures. So this was a coffee cozy we did on a previous felting Friday and it's nice and thick with the pre-felt, so your hand's not gonna get cold. But it also just, it lends itself nicely for all the blending. So they're really nice to work on. Other options, you can use linen, cotton, um, so almost any kind of fabrics you have out there, you can generally needle felt on. Natural fibers are your best option. And then I forgot to mention, um, the last thing I like to have in my kit is some little jewelry pliers. These are great when you break your needle in your, object, in your project and you can't quite get it out with your finger. These will help you pull them out. So just jewelry pliers work wonderfully. Those are basically all the things I like to use. So I'm sure there's many more things out there but this will kind of get you through most of the basics. So thank you for joining us tonight. I will upload this to our website. So if you go to thegeneralbean.com, click on About Us, and then the blog, I will do a blog post on this with a link to our YouTube channel. Right now, that's the easiest way to get there. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that would help us out because once we hit 100, we can just have our own name instead of a long code. So thank you again, and I hope to see you next week over on Facebook.